in the last verses of chapter four, I'll just remind you, it says, those who have trusted, in the last verses of chapter, uh, in the last verses of chapter four, it said, uh, let's put the last two, get rid of the slave woman and her son, for the slave woman's son will never share in the inheritance with the free woman's son. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we are not children of the slave woman, but of the free woman. OK, and when we looked at that, we looked at the situation between law and grace. It cannot be mixed. Um, and it's in, and it's impossible. My Internet's playing up and it's impossible to mix them both. And and, and it showed us that those who have trusted Christ have no connection with the law and it also showed us that that as children we are the children of God and we are free hallelujah we are set free that's Hi, Hello? that's oh, your, your, your screen was going funny it was going funny wasn't it that's that's yeah. our position and then we see uh, um, it describing the believer's position that he is free. And we see in the first verse of chapter five, five reverse, reverts back to this same position that we should be living free. Hallelujah. That we are free. I don't know why it's doing that, Jim. What what laptop are you on? Yours. There you go. So weird. It, it was doing it two days ago, a Sunday and last week as well. That we are free. So here we have a very good illustration. In verse one, it says, "It is the freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm, then, and do not let yourself." Be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Stand firm. Stand firm. That's our position. Stand firm. Hallelujah. So when we look at this position, we can see that we have a very good illustration of the difference between law and grace. The law would say, if you earned your freedom, you will become free. But grace says you have been made free. You have been made free at the tremendous cost of Christ's death. That's what it's saying. It says, stand firm and then do not let yourself be burdened by the yoke of slavery. Because it says it is the freedom that Christ has set us free. Hallelujah. What the work, the finished work on the cross, what Jesus Christ died for us to save us and also not just to save us and give us eternal life, but also to give us freedom in this life. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we have the eternal and we know what Christ done to give us eternal life, to give us salvation, but also to give us freedom in this life that we are living in now we need to not you, you, you know we preach salvation very very well you know where we're going where we're going but what we don't preach and what i don't hear too much described too much is about the freedom in christ that we have now as a believer as a son of God, as a child of God, as our position and the righteousness and the standpoint of, of, the, of the commitment that Christ has given each and every single one of us through the power of his Holy Spirit. So I want us to just really take hold of this position, you know, because this is what we've been given. That is really annoying. This is what we've been given. And um, we want to understand that that grace says that we've been made free at a tremendous cost of the death. 
now in gratitude to him, we should stand fast in the liberty because Christ has made us free. You see, the law commands, but does not enable. It commands, but does not enable. Grace provides what the law demands, then enables a believer to live in a life consistent with the position by the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, when we capture this freedom, we know we need to then enter into that partnership with Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit to then stand in the position that we've been given. A.C. McIntosh says the law demands strength from one who has none and curses him if he cannot display it. The gospel gives strength to one who has none and blesses him in the exhibiting of it. It's absolutely amazing when we look that Paul has been showing the Galatians how foolish it is to abandon liberty for slavery. This is what he's been showing them. Now his tone changes, for he's about to show them that it's positively sinful for a believer to resort to the law at all. This is what Paul is now saying. He's saying, look, look. Christ has set you free. Why are you going back to the law? Why are you going back to slavery? It's like, for me, somebody putting me in chains and then giving me the keys and then going back to that position. And let me tell you, I've done that many times. Hallelujah. But what, what Paul is showing us here, it's impossible for us to do that when we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. And when we're also, not only when we're empowered by the Holy Spirit, but when we're in communion with the Holy Spirit. Because in many times we can all go back, we've run back to, you know, whether it was a boyfriend, whether it was a girlfriend, whether it was drugs, whether it was alcohol, whether it was uh, sexual misconduct, well, any times of things that have bounded us up in many different positions. And I can look back, it could be, it's been, in my life, it's been gambling, it's been, you, you, you know, sexual immorality, it's been, you know, uh, all sorts of things, you know, robbing, stealing, drug addiction. You know, I can see many different slaveries that I've been bound up in. You know, even, even friendships, even relationships, even sometimes kind of ten, you know, I had to look at in my step four how I was bound up in relationships around my family and couldn't even set free from them. Even though knowing that I was going to get shortchanged, knowing that I was going to, uh, there's many, many areas where I've just gone back to that place of slavery. And uh, many times God has given me the keys also. And I've refused to take them. I've made a decision, a conscious decision to stay in it. Whether it was because I felt comfortable, whether it was because I didn't want to grow up, whether it was there were many different reasons. But all I know is I was bound up, bound up. And I, and I have to say, you know, uh, I, I'm coming up to, seven years clean next next month and this is my second stint, second stint of recovery the last one lasted uh uh i think it was twin uh, i think it was about 18 or 19 or 20 years i've done clean and uh i looked at even in that that 20 year process of being clean uh, 19 odd years however however clean i was i was locked up in many different dispositions of slavery and did not even know it and thought I was okay doing well fine and many times on the outside it looked pretty great looked really fantastic if you if you'd have looked from the outside looking in you would have went wow you know and um I can honestly say this time round 
I've been the most free that I've ever been in my life. That freedom in Christ, you know. Uh, 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 and, and and sometimes, you know, it's really difficult for me, you know. It's really, ch- you know, I, I sit on courses sometimes and, um, you know, I'm, I'm around a lot of people that are well-educated and, and uh, you know, doing well in, the, in their walk of life, you know, writing books, you know, done theology degrees and all that. And sometimes I, I go to God and I say, God, why didn't I just do this when I was 25 or when I was 26? You know, why did you have to wait until my ripe old years of, of 49 of giving me this great or, you know, all this sort of stuff? I really get some, 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 some condemnation around it. And I have to really kind of like empower myself around the Holy Spirit because the devil loves that. He loves all that, that fear. He loves all that comparison. He loves all that. Now we, we're doing it in God's time and we'll move on in this, in the, in this particular, Paul talks about his testimony. Particularly, you know, when God, when God strikes, when God says he's had enough, and he, you know, you, 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 he's had enough. And this is where we, this is where I'm at. You know, God said to me, listen, it ain't about you anymore. Bang. Come with me, my child. You know, that's the love, the grace, the grace that we're talking about. That grace of God. Hallelujah. Gemma, over to you. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think this is a it, it is a lovely a lovely piece of scripture, but it can also very easily get misinterpreted, can't it? Because people love to fall into the grace message. They love to hear about the grace and and like how great grace is. And um, yeah, it's what it's a massive gift. Like it's cha- it's God's grace is completely transformed and changed my life and if it wasn't for that like I wouldn't be where I am today but um like part of me I can't forget the fact of like when we are have that infilling of the Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. we no longer we no longer want to agree with the Spirit so like even though we have that grace of God like they get to a point where I know wanna I don't wanna keep living in 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 that sense of grace. Do you know what I mean? I wanna start pleasing my heavenly father. I I wanna start living right. I wanna start doing things the way that he wants me to do, the way I need to be to to progress in my life, to have a closer relationship with him. Because yeah, grace saved me and that that brought me to a place of entering into a relationship and yeah I fall short on a day-to-day basis like and I need that grace on a day-to-day basis but there's that thin line between really having to like try and do things differently like I'm not a calm parent I'm an angry parent I shout I scream I want to kill people and I can't live without God's grace in my life because if I didn't have that, like, I wouldn't be who I am. Do you know what I mean? I wouldn't be able to have patience, be calm, be loving, be kind towards my children because I'm not designed like that. I'm I'm really not. And it's like all of these things, like, I don't... It, you know, I still crave to smoke cigarette and vape. And it's like, I can't do it because you can't go backwards on your journey. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'd love to be able to go to the corner shop next door and go pick up a vape when other people come to my house and do that. But I can't do that today because I know that's going to grieve the Holy Spirit. There's other examples. I'm just picking them out as a, as a, a thing. So it's really important, like, we don't keep using that grace card and like there gets a point in our journey where it's like we really have to I personally I had to look at progressing on my journey and thinking like you know what I don't I don't want to be like this anymore I don't want to be bitter I don't want to keep fueling my body with harmful things I don't want to keep doing um sleeping with my boyfriend's 
in sexual immorality because that aggrieves the Holy Spirit. I don't want to be, oh, yeah, but God still loves me living in grace. I want to get to that point of purity, um, of integrity. I want to get to that higher standard of living where I can be like, God, I really did try for you. Do you know what I mean? I, really, I, I love you, Jesus. I tried to live my life the way that you wanted me to. Yeah, I fell short, but I did really try. So, like, it, it's, it's a really tough one. Like, like, I think this message can easily, like, get twisted up and entangled with, like, just let's just do whatever. And, like, it, I really don't believe that... Paul's trying to say that because we know Paul's character from other scripture we know Paul is like uh, he he's on his stuff he doesn't like people doing like their their nonsense do you know what I mean we hear about in Corinthians we hear about in all the other all the other epistles like it's not all of a sudden oh he just started being nice like Paul started talking about grace and everything was wonderful but like it says at the beginning that um, to, that we become more entangled, um, we just become more entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And I just want to encourage you, like, what is like holding you bondage in your life today? Like, obviously, like a lot of us are in recovery. We've we've dealt with the drugs, we've dealt with the alcohol, but like, it doesn't go away at that sense. It keeps like other things pop up. And other things come along the journey. And um, like Paul speaks about um, having that freedom and being able to, um, like, we can't obviously earn our way to God. Like, we did, like, it's not, not let, I'm not getting this confused with a works based program. Like, we'll never be able to earn the love of God. But, but like, we have to stand firm fast it says stand fast and that means to take effort to stay in a place of liberty so someone who is legally made free in Jesus can still live in bondage like we can all live in bondage but and they can be deceived into placing themselves back into slavery so there might be times like you got saved everything was wonderful everything was amazing the sun was shining oh it was the best thing ever and then bam we're, we're trapped in slavery once again so it can happen to anyone and it doesn't mean you're any less of a believer but that yoke of bondage can really trap us and and this is why the scripture says we must be alert we must not cast we must cast down every imagination we must do all them scriptures around why we must stay alert it's, it's so important and i'll leave it there thank you amen amen emma yeah hi Ivor. how you doing um, yeah that this is a bit of a god moment for me you know i've um i've really been struggling lately with that bondage you know and i'm really caught up in like a lot of fear and like Lately, I've been really like questioning, like, you know, if I had Jesus in my heart, would I be full of so much fear? And it's been like making me question my my faith in that. And now what I've heard on here tonight is that, you know, we can still have that when we do have God in our life. We can still be in that bondage. So for me, it was really it's really about you know, understanding and learning to let go of that fear. Like I'm, I've been crippled in it. Honestly, absolutely just so self-absorbed and crippled in fear. And I'm like, why am I feeling this way? It's like I fear everything. And I really don't want to be feeling that way. And um, I just like, I've been questioning myself, like, am I not doing it? And like what you said, Ivor, like, you know, I'm like five months clean. I'm doing the best that I've ever done in the six years I've been in recovery, yeah. Um, I'm really strong on my recovery, you know. I, I, I'm like, I can't explain like, you know, my life today, my kids, like, you know, like, and like Gemma was saying about that patience and that love, you know, I that doesn't come naturally to me. Like that was God's gift, like God given, like 
today, many occasions today, back in the day, I'd have lost my rag with the kids today. <laughs> I would, that's my truth. I would have. I, I, I was, but that patience I got with them and that tolerance is like, my son's looking at me, waiting for me to like really attack, and I, I'm not doing it. So I can see things working in my life, but it's just this fear I'm absolutely crippled with. And it's like, you know, it's like, I think everybody's judging me in recovery. You know, I've got my main share next week in a, in a meeting and I'm like already in so much self and fear about it. And I just, I'm so trapped. Like I'm so trapped, it's making me feel so uncomfortable. And it's like, you know, it is that bondage. You know, and I want that freedom in Christ. I want that fear, like, to be removed. Do you know what I mean? So, like, yeah, I just need help and prayer. Like, I need to be lifted up. I yeah. really do. Yeah. I'm just so stuck in it. And I, I, I get scared because I, I know, like, if I keep feeding this spirit of fear, like, I, I could end up back out that door. And that's what scares me. Um, Bless you, sister. Yeah. Well, we, yeah. Uh, we want to pray for you. Me and sister, me and sister Jen want to stand in prayer with you. So if you if you want to, you know, just um, ring sister Gemma and uh, we book we book some sessions in. We just want to pray over you that. And we just want to we just want to pray and get that removed in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. So let's li book some sessions in with um, sister Gemma. And uh, we'll 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 get we'll get some prayer in some 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 prayer over you and uh, yeah and uh, let them invite the Holy Spirit into just kind of like um, just a fresh anointing to just come in and and cover you in prayer. So that's there for you, sister. Any time you want to do that. Thank you, thank you, Ivor. I will. I'll get in contact with Gemma. Brilliant. Thank you. That's amazing. And listen, that's listen. You're doing really, really well, and that's the reason why you know things. That you, that's the reason why you're getting some challenges because you're in a new. The enemies place. trying to come in, isn't it? I believe exactly. I believe you know you're in that place right now where you're 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 moving forward. You're growing in faith, you know, and 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 now's the time you you, you kind of like just need to just ring fence yourself, you know, and just you know go on the offensive, you know, yeah. against that attack. Do you know what I mean? Because that's okay, it, and that, and that's yeah. great that you you know, consider it as a compliment, Emma, that you're getting attacked like that because it means you're doing well. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bless you, sister. Let's 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 get some prayer in and let's let's get that booked in. Really, Thank you, really encourage you. Be, you'll find it really really useful. Um, um, two or three sessions, probably about an hour, half an hour, forty five minutes each, and basically it, it, it will help you. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you. OK, Ryan, over to you, brother. Yes. Hello, everybody. God bless you all. Uh, I just want to go back on what Emma was saying there, brother, about, you know, fear. Sometimes we, you know, the Bible says we're no longer a slave to fear, mm. but a child of God. And my message to you, Emma, is just, you know, try Fear will come in, but that fear won't bound on you anymore because you've been set free through the blood of Christ the sacrificial lamb of god and this is the problem sometimes with religion when we become religious mm. we can go to church every sunday we can come out the church go in the church but come also every time we leave the church we can take that religious spirit with us we need to be we need to come to a place to understanding that we are set free in christ we're no longer a slave to that fear my brothers and sisters so you know, we need to remove as much religion in our life as we can, because as Brother Ivor was saying, we're not, you know, we're not bound to the law. We can live by the law by all means, but it doesn't save us. It doesn't set us free. It keeps us in that stagnant place, that that place of being a slave to it. Mm. So I just want to say today that, yeah, I agree that we're saved, but we need to have faith. In Galatians 5 it says it's faith alone that sets us free. You know, you can be religious, but have no faith. You can be religious, but have no zeal. You can be religious, but do you know Christ? Do you know what he did for you at the cross? And when you have true revelation, that religion comes off you. It just, it gets put, torn off you. That bondage, that shekel comes off your feet. 
Amen. And I just want to say to you all right now, stay in what you're doing because Jesus loves you all. God bless you, brother. God bless you. God bless you. And um, uh, uh, Ryan, do us a favor. You got your Bible there, brother? Uh, yeah, I've got it here. Yes. Go to go to 2 Corinthians 10, 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 to 5. Could you read that for us, brother? Let's go here. Yeah. Three to five, three to five. Two Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 to 5. We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not godly's weapons, to knock down the strongholds, come on, yeah. of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. Amen. Powerful. We capture their rebellious faults and teach them to obey Christ. And after you have become fully obedient, we will punish everyone who remains disobedient. Amen. Amen. So we, as it says in there, in, 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 in 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 5, give it different verses, says, we destroy every argument, every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of Christ. So when we're feeling that spirit of fear, that spirit of fear is there to raise against the knowledge of Christ. Christ says you have a spirit of power. So the yeah. enemy wants to come with some fear to come against what Christ is saying to you, that you have a spirit of power. So what we have to do is we need to take those thoughts captive. And we, right. once we get that fear coming in, we need to, you know, you, you know, really go to God with, with prayer, you know, ask him where this fear is coming from, you know, seek his, seek, seek first, his, his, you know, his presence, his love, sound out our brothers and sisters, you know, you know, up our game in the word of God, because the word of God is truth. So that means, you know, that's another thing we need to be in. Do you know what I mean? When we're feeling fearful, we need to understand is, you know, we need to be in the word of God. Amen. The word of God is going to Amen. tell us we ain't not, we ain't got a spirit of fear, as my brother just said. We got Amen. a spirit of power. It says we got a spirit of power. We got a spirit of sound mind. So we Amen. need to read the word. You know, let's think of let's think of how you know uh, uh, you know you know when 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 um, Christ was in the wilderness, every single um, uh, object that the, the the enemy threw at him, Jesus just came back at him with the word of God. And that's yeah. what we need to do. When the enemy wants yeah. to come with that fear, I rebuke that fear, Satan. You know, I'm a child of God. I have a spirit of power and sound mind. I'm not yeah. listening or entertaining that fear today because my God is with me. Hallelujah. Yeah. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? We would really got to get into, you know, being into that place where we are speaking over ourselves. You know, we don't need a pastor or we don't need anybody else to do that. We need we have the power through the Holy Spirit to speak it over ourselves. And hallelujah, guess what? Hallelujah. Speaking over ourselves. Fear just goes that just goes somewhere else. He says, he says, the devil is like a roaring lion seeking place where he can devour so yeah. let's say for instance he comes to me with that spirit of fear and i go oh and i start quaking in my boots well guess what him and his pals are coming to dinner but if i say you know what mr De they say, i rebuke you I, I don't i don't need to listen to your thoughts today you know i'm prayed up i'm in the word of god I'm yeah, I'm spirit filled, and that fresh anointing is with me today. I have the power of the Holy Spirit, and I'm gonna go about my day because my God is with me. Hallelujah! Guess Amen. what? Amen. It's gonna Amen. and go somewhere else. Amen. You see, we have the power through the Holy Spirit that's in each of every single one of us. We need to take control of that power that's inside of us through the power of the Spirit. Amen, Joe. Right, so. Um, just um thinking, like I think fear, the spirit of fear, is like the second component. Do you know what I mean? I think there's a deeper root than the spirit of fear, and it usually seems like spirit of rejection, 
yeah. things like that like it Indeed. comes from a deep deeper root than the spirit of fear so <clears throat> even though people say that they're fearful like fear is just covering up the deeper root so the focus needs to come off the spirit of fear and the spirit, um, onto the spirit of whatever is underlying so if you for example like when you're feeling like in a meeting you're feeling fearful I don't want to share like look at the deeper like ask, your, ask the Holy Spirit like what is the deeper root of this like speak to me holy spirit and like it may say things like for example like you're scared of rejection the spirit of rejection is so deep rooted and so strong that that if once you find the root and you have that revelation from the holy spirit it can you can break it off yourself do you know what i mean but because feed when we feed into the spirit of fear it's it's not going to that deeper level and then the enemy loves that he loves us just doing the surface stuff doesn't he He loves us like not looking at the actual root so i just want to uh, once again encourage yeah. you like ask yourself and ask the, the holy spirit like when you're feeling any any feelings of fear like what is the actual underlying feeling amen amen yeah amen that's so true Gemma thank you for that that's brilliant so we know that legalism makes 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 Christ of no value we covered that we covered that so legalism makes Christ of no value and in, and in the Galatian situation with Paul was talking about circumcision um and not a surgical operation and not a surgical operation so when we look at this it represents a system of salvation of good works so if i do this because that's what they tell me to do and we, we get a lot of it you know we, many christians say uh i just need to go and get baptized and i'm gonna be all right really I'm sure it is. sure yeah really? it's sure. another so we're talking about circumcision by the word of God, but let's bring that to today's terms. Many Christians believe if I just go and get baptized, it's going to be all okay. Yeah. So we're talking about it represents a system of salvation by good works. It's declared a gospel of human effort apart from the divine grace. And we can see that um, Christ supplemented through what he done for us on the cross. That we know that legalism requires Amen. men to keep the whole law. Verse 3. And it says people under the law cannot accept the easy commandments and reject the others. If a person attempts to please God by just doing something, we know he can't keep the whole law. So when we see this, legalism means the abandonment of Christ as one's only hope of righteousness verse four says it has given rise to considerable discussions that many different interpretations have been offered through this book but these may be grouped so we can look at a couple of things the first reason we reject this view as being unscrupulous is because the verse does not describe christians who seek holiness or sanctification but rather unsaved persons who seek justification by law keeping so yeah. we see it, yeah. we see it in a, a lot in the answer. If I just keep doing good, I'll be okay. So we need to understand that that any second of this explanation of this verse implies the possibility of saved people being subsequently severed from Christ, and this is inconsistent with the right view of God's grace. So we need to look at there have been many different interpretations of this particular scripture. Let me look at another one. Um, Paul is speaking of people who might profess to be Christians, but who are not truly saved. So we've got that analogy going on. Might profess to be Christians, but are not truly saved. You know, the, the, the theory of once saved, always saved is, was you really truly saved in the first place? Yeah, man. Yeah, they indeed. are seeking to be justified by keeping the law. And the apostle is telling them that they cannot have two saviors. They must choose either between christ or the law if they choose the law they are severed from christ 
as their only possible hope of righteousness, they've fallen from grace. Christ must be everything or nothing to a man. Amen. Come on. Amen. Must not be limited. Amen. Trust cannot be divided Amen. or have any allegiances. It's got to be acceptable to him. The man who is justified by grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is a, Christ, is a Christian. The man who seeks to be justified by the works of the law is not. Simple. Yeah. A or B. You know what, brother? I don't mean to go over you. Sorry, but the Bible says like it's not in the Bible. But in my opinion, if a man is not, how can a man be attracted to the gospel unless he's on fire for God? Amen. We need to be on fire for God in every single situation we do. For us to be attracted to the gospel and for and let it fulfill our lives into our lives, we need to be on fire. We need Amen. to be. I've got Ryan's, I've got Rory's hand up. Nice one, mate. Thank you. God bless you. Bless you. Rory, over to you, brother. Hi, everyone. Yeah, everyone's making some really powerful points here uh, in this Bible study. I love this. Um, I mean, looking at the scripture here that you've, uh, that we're looking at in, uh, in Galatians, uh, talking about the law uh, and the spirit. Um, and, you know, the gift of the Holy Spirit, which Jesus gives to all of those who call upon his name and um, invite him into his heart, into their hearts. Um, and, uh, you know, like Ryan said, you know, you know, being, being, being on fire for the Lord and, you know, you know, seeking after those things. Um, I mean, just looking at, you know, just addressing a couple of points here, talking about the law, um, uh, because, you know, we, um, you know, I'm reminded of another scripture here in Galatians chapter six. Um, and it's interesting because, I mean, I think a lot of Paul's epistles is talking about uh, the flesh and he's talking about the spirit. And he's kind of like saying to people, uh, look, get out of the flesh and get into the spirit because you have the Holy Spirit. Right. Um, but it says here in Galatians six, uh, it tells us what the fruit of the spirit is, Amen. Uh, what the fruits of the Holy Spirit is. And it says here um, in Galatians six, says here, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in your lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Um, there is no law against these things. Amen. So I think that's really interesting because, you know, um, it, it's almost like, you know, if you just kind of imagine having a utility belt around you, depending on what situation you're coming up against, you can almost kind of reach into a different pocket uh, and actually choose, uh, you know, what it is that you, you know, are going to, in depending on what the situation, you know, like if, you know, someone kind of cuts you up on the middle of the road or something like that, and you kind of get in a little bit, you can be, you know what, let me just choose to be peaceful now, okay? Uh, or if, you know, you're in a meeting and you're getting quite frustrated, um, you know, you can reach into that utility belt and just say, yeah, let me just choose love, Yeah. So I think it's really interesting, um, you know, these fruits of the spirit, um, which is, uh, which is, you know, produced in our lives. And, you know, this is, you know, what Emma was talking about earlier uh, about putting it into practice, you know, uh, continuing in the word, growing in the word. Um, and I just wanted to make one last point as well. Um, I think it was, uh, was it Sister Sarah? Um, uh, yeah. or it may have been yeah. who mentioned about um, uh, you know fear uh, and kind of being like afraid I'm actually reminded of a scripture in um, Isaiah 26 verse 3 um, Isaiah 26 verse 3 um, says uh, thou shalt keep him in perfect peace um, uh, whose mind is stayed upon thee because he trusts in thee. Um, so keeping your mind and keeping your thoughts fixed upon Christ, he keeps us in perfect peace. Um, and I think, um, yeah, that's a really powerful piece of scripture there in Isaiah. Amen. Amen. The thing we need to look at here is this is where the relationship comes in. This is where in this part of the passage and when we're looking at Galatians 5 here, it's what is our relationship like? with christ so i know for me you know when i've got you know stuff going on 
Do you know what I mean? I go to you know, my wife, I go to God, I go to my wife's council, do you know what I mean? In my church, my, my, you know, and I seek out people that I can trust and I can love. He has to be the first one. You know, when we look at verse five, it shows us it shows us that the hope of the true believer is different from the legalists. It's different. The hope I'm waiting for Jesus to return. I'm waiting for for my righteousness in Christ uh, to, to when I comes when it comes to a time when I'm not going to sin anymore. I'm waiting when you, you know I stand before God and God says to me, you know, well, ple I'm well pleased, my faithful servant. I'm waiting, and I know these things are going to be achieved through the power of the Holy Spirit. Because why? Because we cannot do none of this without faith. Oh. Our faith has to be in Jesus Christ, that he is going to do everything. He's going to relinquish us from everything, all fear, completely, you know, be sinless and blameless in front of him. He is going to do it from start to finish, from top to bottom. Second Corinthians 5, 2 and says, but he waits for the moment when we will be completely righteous in himself. He does not hope to achieve this by anything he can do, but rather through the spirit of faith that the Holy Spirit is going to do it all. And all the believer simply looks to is God. In faith to bring it to pass. The legalist, on the other hand, hopes to earn righteousness by his own works. Law keeping, religious observance, vain hope, because righteousness cannot be achieved in that way. We will see. That legalism means the abandonment of Christ. And notice that Paul uses the pronoun we in this verse, referring to true Christians. Whereas in verse four, he uses the pronoun you when speaking to those who seek justification by works. He uses two different pronouns. Legalism, we know, avails nothing. But we know that faith is not idle and it manifests itself in unselfish service, as Ryan was saying, that our own fire must be for Christ for us to go out and live out what he wants us to do. Amen. And that Amen, has brother. to be our motive. And also, it has to be done in love. And this is what, what Rory's talking about. You know, uh, saved by grace to produce good works through the power of the spirit that's inside of us to produce love to produce patience to produce self-control you know it's six years now you, you know i can now close my big mouth <laughs> six years in you know yeah, it, yeah a guy drove past me the other day and, and, and he raced past me and, 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 and he said the, the famous three, three words, U, B, L, A, C, K, up in his fingers up me. I felt the race to go up. And then all of a sudden there was a pause by the Holy Spirit that stopped me. And I was like so amazed because I was driving a car, you know, two, two seconds normally. And I was like, wow. Did you pull out on him? They blow me away. What, mommy? You're muted, Gemma. Can you mute, please? That we know that legalism is disobedience to the truth. That the Galatians have made such a good start in their Christian life. And we've seen it. We've seen it in recovery. That some had hindered along their way. Some had fallen short. And it was it was it was the Judaizers, the legalists, the false apostles, by accepting erroneous teachings, a different teaching. I've seen it. I've seen people on this platform that are now um, practicing. I don't know what is it called. Um, what is it? What is it, Gemma? Um, I don't know what is it. Uh, Reiki. Reiki. A a cult a cult business. They're bold um, Christians. And what 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 I've even seen worse is 
Christian's going, oh, man. Christian's going, great. That's really, really fantastic. Absolutely wonderful. And I'm like, oh. it's lost, Matt. They lost, yeah. Uh, what was that? Sorry, that, um, sorry to. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen, I've, I've seen, I've, when we go back to the Galatians, yeah, <laughs> verse seven, had made such a good start in their Christian life, but some of them had hindered themselves. And particularly the legalists, the false apostles, and they were accepting their uh, a different teaching, totally different from the gospel. And they disobeyed and abandoned the gospel and went. And I've seen it in, in, in Christians. You know, as, as I said, as I was saying, I've seen people on this platform who was on this platform on fire Christians also go to do other things like practicing Reiki. And thinking that's like normal, and other Christians going, "Wow, that's so great!" Legalism is not divine teaching. Amen. Him who calls you refers to God. That's the belief that the law keeping should be added in faith in Christ. Christ does not come from God. Amen. Can't know the Lord if 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 our if our God's an idol, we don't know the Father, you know. Amen. So let's carry on. I'm going to pick it up from verse seven. You were running a good race, who cut in you to keep you from obeying the truth. That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. I am confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confusion, whoever that may be, will have to pay the penalty. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, if I'm still preaching circumcision, why am I still persecuted? Come on. In that case, the offence of the cross has been abolished. As for those agitators, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves in keeping this command Amen. love your neighbor as yourself if you bite and devour each other watch out for you will be destroyed by each other so i say to you walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh Amen. for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh they are in conflict with each other so you are I'm not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Amen. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, Hallelujah. impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, this uh -huh. jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness. All and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those of you who like this will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control against yeah. things. There is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with Man. his passions and desires since we live by the spirit let us keep in step with the spirit let none mm. of us become conceited provoking and envying each other amen amen praise god powerful we thank you for the true meaning of christian liberty Man. we thank you lord that christian liberty does not mean that we have a license to sin we thank you lord that we know that faith cannot be idle and we need the power of your holy spirit father we thank you lord that the gospel of grace has not has always been accused of permitting men and women to live as they like the gospel of grace people say that if salvation is by faith alone then there shall be no control over a person's conduct but the apostle is quick he's quick to point out here that christian liberty does not depend or mean a lie a man or a woman has a license to sin the believer stands in the life of the lord jesus christ and the love 
the love for Christ impels in him to hate sin and love holiness. Amen. And I know we all fall short. And I know this is a tough message that the many, many, many churches don't even want to preach because yeah. they want they want a good uh, influx of congregation. And they don't want to preach the truth. Yeah. The truth is that Paul warns us, he's warning us today, because we're the readers today. Amen. Against this license of grace to think that we can do what we want. It's clearly telling us that we need to crucify the flesh. Come on. Hallelujah. And how do we do that? By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the word of God. Amen. By our relationship with Christ. Amen. And by love. Amen. By loving what we read in the gospel. Yeah, we will get offended. We will take offense. But many times I've been offended and I've taken offense. Yeah. I've had to go to God and say, help me. Because I cannot do this alone. I can't do this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to be in that place anymore, repeating the same mistakes, expecting different results. Help me. I surrender. And that's why I love the 12 step program, you know, the stages of surrender. We come in, we surrender the drugs, you know, then we come in, we get a deeper stage of surrender when we, we made a decision to turn our will over our, you know, what was that? You know, my decision process wasn't very good in the first place. So to think that I'm going to get to step three and all of a sudden my decision making has been fixed is another, another, is another, is another area. But what, 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 what step three did show me there was I'm going to make a decision to continue allowing the Holy Spirit to build my relationship with Christ, to cleanse me, to atone me, to purify me. Through the power of God's spirit and nothing Amen. else. Because I believe that Christ says, even though, even though my sins may be as red as crimson, he can wipe the slate clean, whiter than snow. Amen. Amen. So, so when I got to that step three, I realized it's a process. It's not like it's done. And when I got to that step six, I realized there was another deeper sense of that process of allowing you, you know, me to look at myself through that four and five, getting that revelation, getting that confession, and then going to God and saying, here it is, remove these defects. Remove it, remove it from my character, remove it from my attitude, remove it from my life. I repent. Amen. It means to turn away, turn away from that thing, turn That's away, true. turn away, turn yeah. away. I repent, I repent. Christian liberty does not permit sin. Instead, it encourages loving service. Love is the motive for all Christian behavior. Whereas under the law, guess what the motive is? Can someone tell me? We've been talking about it. Fear. Fear is the motive. Love slaves are the true free men. The Christian freedom is in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Over to you guys. Come in. And then we're going to close in prayer. Anybody wants to come in, feel free. You know, just, just as you're speaking, Bob, you know, the Holy Spirit's working, powerful message. And we're, you know, we're called to live by the spirits of power. 
let that let that Holy Spirit guide our heart daily, you know, and and you know we'd be sanctified in the Word. Amen. Yeah, sanctification is so important, Amen. you know, and I just pray that people come to realize that just like it was 2022 years ago, people are saved by the fire of God. They weren't saved by no church. Over 3,000 souls are saved on that day of Pentecostal. Amen. And that is what I'm praying for today. That's the same church that I want to follow. That's the same reason I go out and preach the gospel to every, every person I possibly can, to reach out and tell them that I don't follow man. I'm submitted to God. I'm the authority of God, but I'm here to tell you that it was somebody that can save anybody. Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's so important for us to, to understand Amen. that we're, we're no longer living by that law. We need to come out of that religious mindset. We need to come out of that bondage. We need to come out of that place of, of, of listening to what other people tell us in that religion. Amen. Because true conviction doesn't come from man. When you sin, true conviction comes from God. Amen. That's where the conviction goes. When you, when you become truly born again of the spirit, not like, like you were saying where people just go and get baptized. Yeah. Anyone can get baptized. All of us can get baptized. But if you're not walking in the spirit, then how are you chastised by the word of God? We need, we need to be in a place of understanding and working out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. Amen, brother. God bless you. God bless you, man. Yeah. God bless you. Bob's go on, brother. Bob's, where are you? Your hands up. Yeah, yeah, hi, yeah, hi, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, thanks a lot for this um um uh, powerful um message or powerful um part of the Bible. I really love Galatians, and um for me, uh, for me, I struggled for fear for, for, like a lot of my a lot of my life. I really struggled with fear, but I think coming to know the Word of God has really transformed me and um. The more we I stay in the Word of God, it's really transforming. So I just thank God for like all these sessions we're having because it really encourages us. And um, yeah, I just wanted that's what I wanted to share that. Yeah, I think we just have to just like stay in the Word because obviously we we struggle every day. You know, the flesh mm -hmm. is always fighting against the spirit, and the spirit is always fighting against the flesh. But I think um, we just have to keep on um, fighting and keep on um, moving forward with our with the Word and really, yeah. These sessions are really good, and yeah, that's why. Yeah, that's why I'm here. Thank you. Bless you, brother. Bless, bless you. you. Yeah, bless, yeah. You. bless you. Bless you. Bless <laughs> you. Oh, so blessings. I just love hearing your voice. I just love hearing your voice. Seriously, I don't know. This just coming about. It. Do you know what I mean? I just. You know, I just got so much love in my heart for you. Do you know what I mean? I can even feel your smile right now. God bless you, sister. And I hope you have a blessed afternoon with those lovely children of yours. Bless you. Seriously, bless you. Just like, just, 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 you know, just the fact that you're here with us. It's amazing, man. Bless I've you, even got my jump, I've, even, I've even got my jumper on. I've even got my jumper on. So God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and sound mind. So, yeah, I just like fight the word of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Bless you, bless you. Gemma, bless you. <laughs> amen, amen. Yeah, it's really, really, really powerful, everyone. Thanks, thanks, everyone, for sharing. The thing that, uh, what came to my mind is... um. This is this is the importance of the accountability, isn't it? It's like when when you hang around with like non-believers and and, and non-Christians or people that aren't living living right, like we start believing that it's okay and oh, it's that other standards of living, isn't it? And then this is the importance of like the accountability having having brothers and sisters around us and um, being honest with our own stuff like brothers and like coming out to be like that pride come with all that pride that spirit of pride hiding behind pride and having that humility that it speaks about in the 12-step program of having that humility to really come forward to and like say, you know what, I'm struggling because when we open up about our struggles, like it, it, it almost like it gets rid of that stronghold, doesn't it? It's like it, it really helps, um, yeah, getting rid of that stronghold and letting people into what we're going through and 
and um yeah just the importance of it and I just think um yeah just think it, it it's so easy to get led astray isn't it so so easy and uh, um just the importance of how much um we need that holy spirit and um like what what does our day consist of with the holy spirit like is it literally just fitting it into like our five minute routine in the morning and then basically just being like okay thanks holy spirit thanks jesus thanks god i'm just gonna go do whatever i want now and i'm just gonna go out and just agree with you for the rest of the day and do swear and do this and do that and and then and on and we catch up tomorrow morning for five minutes and leaving it at that so yeah I just that importance of staying connected throughout the day um like one day at a time just for today is is so important and like we understand that we understand that mentality with the recovery program but there's recovery and then there's relationship with Jesus and obviously it's two different things isn't it isn't it so yeah amen Amen. I always say that recovery gives us uh, um, working the steps gives right sizes us but um, our relationship with God gives us the righteousness of Christ and there's the big difference being right sized to the righteousness of Christ. Hallelujah. I'm just going to finish up on this. It says, a proper outlet for our freedom is to make it a habit to be slaves to one another. True freedom is only found in obedience to proper restraint. A rival finds liberty to flow only between banks. Without this, it would only spread out into a slimly stagnant pool. Planets uncontrolled by law would only bring wreck to themselves and to the universe. The same law which fences us in, fences others out, the restraint which regulates our liberty. Also ensures and protects it. It's not control, but the right kind of control and and a cheerful obedience which makes the free man. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, we thank you for this evening. Next week, we're going to touch a little bit more on, um, again, uh, the, the bum, 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 bum. we're going to touch a little bit more on the walking in the spirit, uh, picking up from 5 to 16. We're also going to uh, go and talk about a lot about, a little bit more about works of the flesh, which we all know about in through our active addiction. And we're going to finish up on the fruits of the spirit and also touch on a a little bit more practical exhortations next week. So I hope you can join us. Feel free to bring a friend or invite someone to come along with us. Our next meeting is going to be Wednesday morning in our morning devotionals. So I look forward to seeing you guys uh, there with us, praying and lifting each other up. So I just want to pray uh, for a uh, before we close. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that we just bound up any fear right now in the name of Jesus. We come against it right now, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, in unity and in strength. Father, I pray today, Lord, that we know, and it's uh, even on Barb's t shirt, you said that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but you've given us a spirit of power and sound mind. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, that we come to you, that we can put on the full armor of God in the name of Jesus as we come to you today. We thank you for this Bible study. We thank you for empowering us. We thank you for enriching us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We come to you today to strengthen us, Lord, through the the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you, Lord, as we come to you today. Help us, Lord. Guide us. Lead us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Let your will be done in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for harmony. We pray for unity. We pray for vision. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray for revival. We pray for those that are lost. We pray for those that are perishing. We pray that we can please you rather than people. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. As we come before you today, lift every 
every single one of us, Amy, Emma, Ryan, Rory, Sarah, Barbs, Gemma, Ivor, in the name of Jesus, and every member of Faithful Ministry, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray today that you just lift us up, Lord. We pray for those that are suffering in Turkey right now, those that are lost, Lord. We pray for those that have lost their lives. We pray for those that are persecuted around your world. Father, we just pray that you strengthen us in the power of the Holy Spirit. Through your son, Jesus Christ, lift us up today. Lift each and every single one of us. Build your hedge of protection around us. We thank you, Lord, as we come to you, because you are the wall of our protection in the name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, that you deliver us from Satan and his demonic forces in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that we come to you boldly to your throne of grace and we intercede for each other right now in the name of Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that you are our help. You are our help in times of trouble. We pray for that spirit controlled life. We thank you, Jesus, Lord, that you are here with us in Jesus mighty name. We pray. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord your God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this ministry. Thank you for all those that come and serve and put their time and read and, and, and share and share the good news of your gospel, Lord. Build us up, Lord, in faith. Build us up together in unity and in strength by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless you. May God, Amen. Keep you. May God shine his face upon you and give you his peace. See you all Wednesday morning. God bless, God bless you. you all. God bless you. Take care. God bless you. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.